Welcome to the Be Ruthless Show, where we have the conversations that other people don't, the conversations that other people won't. I'm your host, Sam Ruth, and I'm ready to make a lot of noise and disrupt things ruthlessly. Thanks for being here today. Now let's get to it. Welcome back to the Be Ruthless Show. I'm your host, Sam Ruth, and joining me today is Anchel Vash. She's a two-time international best-selling author and three-time award-winning thought leader. In 2022, she was recognized as the top 10 Indian women leaders in Canada by Women Entrepreneur India. Her passion for creating impact radiates through her personality and her relentless advocacy for social work. She was born in India, raised in Nigeria, and is now a citizen of Canada. She's been relentless in her pursuit of being financially independent ever since her childhood. After the passing of her twin brother, Tushar, by suicide, she became mental health first aid certified and realized the need for basic mental health education in her community. She's also a certified Canfield success trainer and has made it her mission to help people improve their well being while achieving continued success. She's the founder of Reach Out Together Foundation. Thank you so much for being here. What an exciting time for you this is. I'm, I'm truly honored to be here, Samantha. Thank you for having me. Tell us about your book. This is an exciting day for you. Absolutely. So my book launches tomorrow, which is June 29th, and it's called Ongoing Success and Wellbeing. Um, I've sort of been a child of personal development since I was very young. I had an older brother who passed away by malaria. I was 13 years old, but he was a big, avid reader, and he mainly like absolutely love the books Chicken Soup for the Soul, written by Jack Canfield, the creator of Chicken Soup for the Soul. And that's how I was introduced to him at a very young age. And my older brother would pretend to be a trainer and would <laughs> get a glass, a mirror, and start teaching my twin and I concepts, things that he'd learned through these books. And I think that shaped my upbringing. It made me the person who I am today. And it was just the right time to put everything I have learned through my childhood experiences till today to just pass it forward for the young professionals or just high achievers that are constantly chasing what's next, what's next, but are not really taking the time to understand how they're feeling in that pursuit of achievement. So that's what this book is really about. I love that you just said that because we're so busy and we can go, go, go that people don't always slow down enough to enjoy the moment and, and the experience. Yeah, absolutely. So this book is really for the hungry souls out there for success who often feel drained and unhappy in that pursuit. How full circle to go from your brother and the, the chicken soup for the soul books to actually being a part of the Canfield community. It really was. I think it was in, in that moment when I actually saw him live in person, the, the, I felt a sense of closure. You know, I understand why my older brother was the way he was. He was the gem of the family. You know, we grew up in an in a Indian community in Nigeria. We stayed there all our lives. And um, unfortunately, like the environment we were raised in was a little, um, a little tough to say the least. You know, um, my parents, especially my dad, he took on this role of providing for his family and he went through so many hardships to make that happen. But he was, you know, he, he did have certain qualities that would probably not be the best for his children, you know, to witness. And so it was, it was, that's why I find my older brother was that gem. You know, he was sent to all of us to help us with these real world strategies and these tools that we could apply in our daily life to sustain well-being ourselves. You know, like concepts like gratitude and the power of review, setting a vision and visualizing. These are things I've been doing since I was so young. I didn't even know there were strategies. And that's the thing. I think people don't or they're mocked. I had a lot of people kind of tease my dreams. Mm. You know, and, and when we're young, nothing's going to stop us, but then we grow up and the world has comments. And so for anyone not familiar with these tools and strategies, yeah. they might sound simple. They're life-changing if you're committed to doing them. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that's why even when I came here to Canada, I came here for university. 
I ended up enrolling myself into college simultaneously because I just had a vision that down the line, like I want to create impact, you know, and my father would always tell me, no, you first need to go get a job, get multiple jobs, gain experience, you know, limited beliefs. But I just had a feeling in me that I need to make a difference. Like I want to help people in any capacity that I can. And so my goal immediately was to be financially independent from the age of like 17 years old when I came here. And immediately, like at the age of 20, I set up my first business and I kept growing ever since then. Just any opportunity to grow and expand or learn, I'm going to take it. A lot of people have that business mind, but you are unique in that you are giving back and wanting to make that impact. Okay. Has that been with you always? Yes, it has. I think it was probably because I grew up in a country like Nigeria, where at that time, 50% of the population lived below the poverty line. So wherever you go, you're seeing people and families live in conditions that are just, you know, it's just um, something that I feel comes innate. Like, for example, I would do something as small as like, um, when my mom used to pack us lunch for school, I wouldn't eat my food. I would keep it because at the end of the day, I know for certainty that I'm going to come across children on the street that are looking for, you know, they're looking for money or they're looking for food. So I would choose what child that day was going to get my meal, you know? And, it's, and so growing up, I just had this feeling within me that I, if I'm, I know I'm at a position today because I'm going to go home and I have my beautiful mother who's prepared a great meal for me. You know, I knew that, that I'm coming from a place of privilege at a very young age. And so I've always wanted to give back at every opportunity that I could. Was it losing your twin that made you passionate about mental health and making a difference? Or were you already on that road? I studied psychology in university and I don't even know what made me do it, to be very honest, but it was definitely the passing of my twin brother, Tushar, because I never, ever thought that he would ever do something like that. I, could, I couldn't, I, at this point, I can't fathom the pain that he must have been experiencing for him to think that that was the only thing he could do. And that was the moment for me where I ended up quitting a job I was very happy at. I was financially doing very well for a person my age, but that money did not, like in that moment, it wasn't about that. It was about doing something that is fulfilling me because I know that when you create impact, it also makes you feel good. And I think I needed that for my own healing while I'm helping other people. And that's when I quit that job and I became mental health first aid certified with the Mental Health Commission of Canada. I learned so much from being in that training. And all that I could think about was, why does our community not know about this? The, like the basics, these are absolute basics. And that's when I started Reach Out Together Foundation. And we've just been relentless in hosting our workshops to educate different communities. What are the workshops about? Because this is a topic that affects everyone. It's just not talked about. Absolutely. So we, we, we need different trainings for different organizations. So uh, workplace trainings to ensure that you have a psychologically safe work environment for your employees. We need trainings for women. Um, but in general, to summarize, we teach people about what is mental health, what is mental illness, what are the signs and symptoms, where to go to seek help. Ultimately, we like to focus on that topic of what what services are available and how do you reach out to them? Um, we also teach this methodology that's actually in this book, Ongoing Success and Wellbeing. Um, it's a methodology that I created out of my experience from losing my twin brother. And based on our interaction, even though I knew at some point he wasn't doing well, he wouldn't be open to receiving help and support and he would push people away. And I realized that he was more open to listening to certain people versus others. And I've journaled about this. I've thought about this, reflected on it so much that I ended up coming up with a methodology to help people who are going through a difficult and a troubling situation and often get triggered when people say the wrong thing or try to offer the support in the way that they're not willing to receive in that moment. 
Um, it's in detail. It's actually the bonus chapter of this book. And it's, I do workshops all the time on how to ask for help. We're not taught and no one can get through anything alone. So I love this. I love the fact that we're talking about it. I think men are more resistant for, for societal reasons and people who have experienced the loss are reaching out to me feeling so alone because death by suicide is different than other loss. There's shame and stigma and loved ones aren't being talked about. So how do you help people through that? Thank you for asking that question, Samantha. I think this is very important. Having been a person that's gone through that, I think I still in a way continue to go through that. What I noticed was my immediate community didn't know how to approach me. They couldn't even look at me in the eyes. They constantly avoid talking about it. And now I've, here I am an advocate for mental health. I'm constantly talking about it, sharing my story to help people. And I'd often have people come back to me and tell me, I think you should stop talking about the shard. Like, I don't think this is going to help you. And, you know, it's just like, oh, it's been too long since you've talked about your older brother and your twin brother. I think it's time to let it go. <laughs> so I hear of these statements so often. And I also notice that even within, now my only family are my parents, right? And I still notice that they find it hard to have those conversations with me. And this is what I have to say, because I had to put my foot down and I became relentless in the pursuit of my well-being. And that's what I would advise you to do. That, you know, we've talked about, we, or we all know what event plus response equals outcome, right? Event is what has occurred in your life. Response is the only thing you can control that determines your outcome, which is your very present moment. In this case, the event is someone passed away by suicide that we dearly love and it crushed our spirit. The response is how we're going to respond to this. That's gonna determine our very present moment. So I immediately went ahead and started joining some um, support groups specific to suicide loss survivors. I brought some of them to my house when my parents came to visit for the funeral, just because I wanted them to be in that environment and talk about it and not internalize it as much. You know, you either express or you depress. I wanted them to express as much as possible. And so I continued on with the support, um, got myself a therapist for the very first time, you know, coming from my culture, I think doing that was, you know, truly breaking the stigma. And realizing that, hey, this is actually awesome. <laughs> like, I love my therapist. I changed three of them until I found someone where our energy levels kind of match. And I absolutely love that experience. I don't know what the stigma is about, but I advise everyone to have one. You know, right? Everyone all have had one. someone to go to. Yes, absolutely. And again, goes back to it, like event plus response equals outcome. My present moment being here today, writing a book, I published two other books right here. Um, and I, whatever I've done today has only been because I have chosen a response that was not easy, but I knew that it would lead to a different present moment. And I want to actively make sure that I'm doing everything in my power to take care of myself. And that's what I'd like and invite you all to do. Whoever is listening to this, I want you to know that you have the rest of your life to go through. And I don't want you to feel that you're alone in that journey and that no one cares or no one understands. People out there understand. You just have to find the right community. And once you start supporting each other, you feel more encouraged to keep showing up for yourself. You take the right actions to take care of your own well-being. I talk a bit more about this in the first chapter of my book because right off the bat, I wanted to address well-being. So um, if you buy the book, I'd love to hear your feedback on if that helped at all understand where you're at and if it inspired you to define where you want to be. I love that. And we all have those choices every single day. Yes. Nothing is set in stone and we can change a response at any moment and change course and make a decision 
that we matter and that we've we've lost a lot and we get to decide how we spend the rest of our life so that it's less painful. Some people can't think about joy and happiness yet. Those words seem impossible and I was there, but you'll get there if you find these supports and stop focusing on what you think the way to heal is. If I listened to, to what other people told me about healing, I don't know where I would be. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And that's why you are where you're at today too, right, Samantha? I also like to say that one thing that we should all make sure that we do for ourselves is have a person in our life that can acknowledge it, not validate our feelings rather. I think acknowledgement is so crucial when it comes to healing. Like just saying words to someone like, I see your pain. You know, I see you're struggling and it hurts me to see you this way. I think just these words make such a profound impact. Because so many people don't know what to say and say nothing that those people that speak up and just recognize you're going through it. I get it. I'm here. That is priceless. So also to anyone who doesn't know what to say, uh, I always just say, say anything, even saying, I don't know what to say. Oh, yeah. absolutely. I love that. Um, we were talking about, you know, sometimes the community doesn't know what to respond. And I agree with you, like always say something. Um, there are certain things that I, I would recommend not to say to not trigger mm -hmm. them further. And if you're interested in learning more about that, it is in my book, Ongoing Success and Wellbeing. What about a friend you're concerned about? How do I know if I should say something or do something or bite my tongue and just let somebody live their life? <laughs> <coughs> There's absolutely nothing wrong in starting a conversation if you're ever worried about somebody. If they're okay, that's great. But if they're not and they're pretending to be okay, they still leave feeling a little acknowledged for their pain. So I always recommend just ask, how are you truly doing today? Is there anything I can do to support you? Or think, think straight, like I'm noticing that you're not doing this to take care of yourself. Is there, is anything wrong? Like these words matter. Like you said, it's that acknowledgement. Yeah, and letting people know you're coming from a place of love. I'm saying this because I care. I'm not judging you. I'm saying this because I, I care and I want to speak up. I think the minute you're thinking it is the minute you need to say something. If you are wondering whether or not someone is okay, that's enough of a sign. I think we don't have to wait for bigger ones. I have a client who's who has a friend who told her she took a couple of pills that aren't her pills. And I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> that's a cry for help in some way, shape or form. She's telling you. So we live in this world that sweeps things under the rug and avoids these uncomfortable conversations. You don't have to have the perfect answer. Uh, you can just listen and be a part of the conversation. And if you need more help, you can reach out. How do people find you and your foundation if they want a workshop to learn more clear skills that are tangible? Absolutely. You can find us on uh, the internet. Our website is reachouttogether.com or you could reach out to my team at info at reachouttogether.com. And we're, I'm here in Colorado in the United States. Do you do virtual events for people? Yeah, yeah because this is- In the pandemic, we truly had to transition. Um, before that, we were traveling around and we, we've held like around 28 events in like 26 cities across the world. But this was pre-pandemic. So in the pandemic, everything had to become virtual. Um, but it gave us access to certain communities that we otherwise wouldn't have been able to go to. And um, that's just such a bigger impact virtually. Yeah. And I know you said your book gives resources and your workshops tell people where to go for help. When you were, you said you brought people to your house to help your parents have the conversations. Yeah. Did you have people in your life? Did you have a community of survivors of suicide or did you have to reach out? I had to reach out. I actually found, I immediately, my response was, I, I think this is going to help. Um, 
And I knew that my parents were visiting for just a week and I wanted them to get as much support as they could before they were about to head out. So I started looking up multiple, multiple resources. But here's what I also have to say. Out of 10 of them that I reached out to, I only heard back from two. This destroys me. I knew you were going to say that before you started. I, I, that's the biggest problem. But that's why you have to be relentless. This is not, it's, this is not what anyone else but you. You're doing this for yourself. So if, if you hear a no, you just move on to next. And that's what it's about. It's something I learned in sales too. <laughs> no means next. So just next, 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 until you find someone that's aligned and is going to help you with what you're looking for, right? Because if it's meant to be, it's up to me. <laughs> and for those who are not responding, I apologize on their behalf. There are those of us that will respond immediately. So keep looking, yeah. ask someone. I am horrible with technology, so I wouldn't know all of the places to look. Find somebody who's better at research and just go down the list because I, I hate those that give the rest of us a bad name, but there are people out there that will respond and that will help you find the person that's the best match. It's not about finding me. It's about finding who you connect with. Oh, I love that. I agree with you. When I first my, found my first therapist, it was through a firm that had um, a database of multiple different kinds of health. And after an initial consult with me, then they told me, hey, I think this would be good. And when I didn't per se like, like that interaction, I didn't find that to be very helpful for me. I went back to the initial consult and I told them, and then they referred me to someone else until I found someone that you know worked really well with my personality and my culture. Not everyone would have thought to go back to him. Yeah. That's an amazing salute. What do, unfortunately, most people don't find the right person the first time. If you have and you do, congratulations. Most people really do have to, it's like finding the right doctor. You have to find the person you're going to be comfortable being yourself with. So going back to the agency is an amazing, that takes the weight off of you having to do the work. Absolutely. I was so grateful that I even found that resource. Um, I didn't even it, I was, so here's the thing. I was in that, in this phase of, I need to create impact. I want to host these workshops. And I kept going every month. I had a training that I had created and I had a friend who was just watching me go and not take a break. And he's the one that came up to me and initially said that to me, Hey, I think that you should just go for therapy. Not because I think there's anything wrong with you. I just think that this is going to help you sustain it sustain everything you're doing. And in that moment, I was like, I don't have time for it, you know, because I have so much going on. Then he sent me a lengthy email. It was so well drafted. And he had two to three resources in this email. And I just clicked on a couple of them. And I'm like, this is so incredible. I am so grateful for a good community. And definitely from what it used to be to what it is now has reduced ever since my twin brother passed away by suicide. I don't know why, but it did but I'm so grateful for what it is right now. And I'm actively and intentionally now trying to grow my network with people that are driven, impact creators, people that care about making a difference or just be kind to one another. And what a great friend. He yeah. had a conversation with you and then he sent an email because he cared that much. So to anyone listening, if you're thinking of someone who hasn't heard you, then maybe there's another way you can get that point across because people who care about us the most see things that we don't see in ourselves. And it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with you. It means that you are enlisting someone to be on your team to help you accomplish your goals. Yeah, I love that. Well said. Anything else about the book? Where can people get it today? Um, it will be live on Amazon at midnight. Um, all that you have to do is just type ongoing success and well-being. Um, it's a beautiful golden and white looking book. <laughs> and I truly hope that this book impacts someone you love or yourself, um, because I've put a lot of thought, a lot of research into it. And I'm really looking forward to your feedback. How can people reach you to give that feedback? I'm sure it's in the book, but we can put it in the show notes if anybody wants to connect now. If you'd like to connect with me directly, you can always find me on social media. 
Uh, my handle across all platforms are at Anshul Vash, or you can send me an email at info at anshulvash.com. Any last words, final thoughts for people listening? All that I can say right now is if you're feeling alone, you're feeling down, I want you to know that I see you, I've been there, but I also want you to know that this too shall pass. You're not alone. And if you feel alone, it's about finding others who get it because someone somewhere gets it, even if we don't. And if you need help finding that person, you can connect with me, connect with Ancho, and please, please support the book, Ongoing Success and Wellbeing, available on Amazon. And thank you so much for your time and your story. And until next time, everyone listening, always be ruthless. Thanks so much for listening today. Your support means everything to me, truly. If this podcast resonates with you, please do me a favor and join in the Ruthless Movement by making some noise and doing one of these four things. Subscribe so you don't miss an episode. Tell a friend so we can break stigmas even faster. Leave a review so people can see what you think of the show. And last, if you want to learn more about me and be a part of the Grief Hub community, please head on over to the Facebook group. We'd love to have you. Thanks again for spending your time with us and see you next week.